Welcome guys, this Science of Sport video will look at uh, Unit 2 Functional Anatomy and Learning Outcome A1 which is all about anatomical language and truthfully sports science is very terminology heavy. There's an expectation that you should be using the correct terminology when you're describing all sorts of things whether it's to do with the cardiovascular system, the muscular system or in this case uh, body areas and movements. Here's the content from the specification. So first thing to notice, we've got this um, key position, this standing position, which we'll look at. But all the other terms here, the language here, are in pairs. And effectively, it would be really advisable to learn them in pairs. You, you can remember one, you'll figure out the other. So the first important uh, bit of language or phrase that you need to know is the anatomical standing position. Now, the image on the right is the anatomical standing position. Literally, it's the starting point that with which we would describe movements. So um, you can see from the bullet points there, it says body facing forwards, feet pointed forwards and slightly apart, arms hanging down on each side. So it's a relaxed, normal standing position. And what you might want to do to try to help you remember those key phrases, because they're the sort of phrases you might expect to see on a mark scheme, um, could be something like picking the first letters out of those words. You can see I've made them yellow, B, F, A. So anatomical standing position, body, feet, arms. Um, it's not a complicated position, but it's really important to get those three descriptions in your mind. So remember that this is a point of reference. This is where we describe our bodily movements from. And what we mean by that is this sort of thing. So again, here's our anatomical standing position. And here are some um, images that show different kinds of body movements. You might recognize some of these from your studies already. Um, so from the anatomical standing position here to uh, move your arm forward and upwards is flexion at the shoulder joint. OK, but the starting point was the anatomical position. We're not going to focus on these movements in this video, but the anatomical standing position is just something for you to understand that we describe movements from. So other bits of anatomical language that you will need to become familiar and very confident using are directional terms. I want you to just watch this short video that goes through a lot of the directional terms that you need to know. In this video, we will be discussing anatomical directional terms. Anatomical terms help us to identify the location of both internal and external body structures. Most of these terms are used to identify where something is located on the body relative to another body part. These terms refer to the locations of human body parts as they occur in the universal anatomical position. The anatomical position is an upright standing position with arms at the side palms facing forward, and both feet together. When we need to describe the location of a body part as being above or below another body part, we use the terms superior and inferior. When a body part is superior, it is considered vertically closer to the top of the head in the anatomical position. On the other hand, a body part is considered inferior if it is closer to the bottom of the feet. For example, with the abdomen as the point of reference, we could say that it is both superior to the pelvis and inferior to the chest. When we need to describe the location of a body part as in front of or behind another body part, we use the terms anterior and posterior. Like other anatomical directional terms, a body part being either anterior or posterior depends on the point of reference. Anterior is towards the front of the body, while posterior is towards the back of the body. For example, the nose is anterior to the ears. And using these same points of reference, we can say that the ears are posterior to the nose. Please note that the terms ventral and dorsal are also used interchangeably with anterior and posterior when referring to both human and animal body parts. However, the terms anterior and posterior are mainly used for locating human body parts. If you want to describe the location of something that is relative to the middle of the body, you would use the term medial. To identify something located medially, you would create a midline division of the body. The midline is an imaginary line that goes from top to bottom and divides your body into two equal parts, left and right. When you have the midline, the body part that is closer to the midline division 
is medial to the structure farther from the midline. The structure that is farther away from the midline is referred to as lateral. Whether you use lateral or medial to describe a structure largely depends on the site you have to describe. Here are some examples. The bicep muscle in the upper arm is lateral to the pectoral muscle in the chest. Further, in the anatomical position, we could say that the pinky finger is medial to the thumb. Proximal and distal are used to describe the location of points on a limb relative to that limb's connection to the torso. The proximal site is the one that is closer to the limb's point of attachment, while the distal site is the point that lies further away from the point of attachment. As an example, the wrist is considered distal to the elbow, and the elbow is proximal to the wrist. Superficial and deep are the last two directional terms we will cover. Superficial refers to a location towards the surface of a body structure or organ, while deep is concerned with the location that is towards the center of a body structure or organ. For instance, if we look at a cross section of the skin, the top skin layer, called the epidermis, is superficial to the subcutaneous layer. The subcutaneous layer is considered deep to the epidermis. So there you have it guys. I think that video nicely summarizes and illustrates with some examples the anatomical language that you will need to be able to describe and define but also use when answering a question. Um, here's a summary of the specification definitions. You will need to learn these, you'll need to know these terms and be able to define them and obviously clearly on the right there there's a, there's a diagram that um, shows you what they are again.